famous Robert Frost poem, I'm sure that you have at least heard the last line, and I, I took the road less traveled by. I think we interpret that as we have to set out on our own path and that it's different than everyone else's. And that's really the true spirit of independence and individualism. But I actually think that Robert Frost is pointing out something really different and it's really what we're talking about this week and that is that you have choices. So often I hear people say, I can't help it or I had no choice. I remember doing that. I was in the first year of my first marriage and it was a really rough day, one in a long string of difficult days and I thought what if this is all there is what if it never changes what if he never changes and I don't change and we're always struggling and pushing and I'm never going to belong in this moment and it was at that moment that I had that lie pop into my head which is I have no choice and then I left the relationship very abruptly very immaturely the truth of the matter was is that there were a million choices around me but because I wasn't centered in my purpose I didn't want to see them I couldn't see them all I thought was that it was either stay or go. Often uh, people come to me and they say, I just want clarity. I want to know what I'm supposed to be doing. And they think that as they advance towards their purpose that they're going to find clarity, meaning it's going to slim down the number of choices that you have in your life. But that's actually not true. When you are in your purpose, when you are centered in the way that you're meant to be, you will see a million choices because your purpose, your best life is rooted in abundance. There are so many ways to offer your talents and your gifts, to live in your best thoughts, to give from your best self. It's not for the faint of heart. It is for the courageous. That's what Frost was saying, that he took a choice that he wasn't sure about. He took a choice that didn't have guarantees. We do this to ourselves. We force ourselves into choices before we have a chance to actually experience what the possibilities are. We say, I have no choice, and we get out of difficult situations before we find out whether we can triumph over those situations, and then we're kind of left with an unsettled feeling. Sometimes we say, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle what I really want. I don't know if my life is going to be able to handle it. Or we think, what if I choose that other thing and I don't like it as much as what I have right now? I think I'm going to circumvent the chance that I'll even be able to make the choice and I'll turn away the opportunity. I'll pull away from the possibility. So I want to tell you first that there's three things that you shouldn't be doing when you see the possibilities in front of you. One is, I don't want you to extrapolate out as a daily practice. Your ability to vision should be a space of inspiration, but let's get real. You don't actually know what's going to happen in the next minute. You could be all over for you, or you could find an amazing idea that you had never seen before. So you go ahead and imagine what will happen if this day is the way the rest of my life is going to be, so that you can look inward and say, do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I continue on? What do I need to change? So that's one. Number two, I want to make sure that you don't take hard turns because of something that you're feeling. Because there is no such thing as a day that lasts forever. You know this because think back to 10 years ago. 10 years ago there was hardly any social media. It certainly wasn't for adults. 10 years ago there was no way that I would be able to live in a, in a really small market in the middle of the country and be able to talk to you. If you understand that life will never be the way it is right now, you can get real about investing in your life right now instead of running away from it or clinging to it. The third thing that you need to make sure you understand, and, and you really need to stop doing this, just like I don't want you to extrapolate, I don't want you to take hard turns, is I don't want you to believe that you can actually see exactly how it's going to turn out. I promise you that you're going to be disappointed. That marriage looks nothing like your wedding day. The process of being married, the process of being in a friendship for a long time, the process of cultivating your talent means that every Every day looks different and that you might have a glimmer of something that you want in the future and you should work towards that but I promise you when you get there it's going to be exactly like this day is with some good things and some difficult things there is no perfection as long as you are living on this earth I promise you so what should you be doing well there's a couple things that I think uh, number one I think that you need to love what you want in your future 
and then take that as a spark and love what you need in the day. You should never have something in the future that makes you hate your now. And if you do, then let me tell you, you're not in alignment. Number two, I think you need to live in this moment with excellence because that's the only way that you're gonna get anywhere and the only way that you will be able to release any regrets. In my second marriage, I had a similar day. I had a day where I was sitting on my bed and it was really rough and there had been a few days like that all strung together and I thought, what if it never changes? What if I've done this to myself again? But this time, I was centered in my purpose. And I looked around and I thought, what can I do so that I can have the marriage that I want? And all the fingers pointed back to me. I could learn how to do things differently in the areas that I was struggling in. And at the end of the day, if it didn't change in my marriage after I became amazingly better, then maybe I would have to deal with that, but not on that day. And so when I did that, I was able to move forward and really honestly, my situation with my husband did get better. The situation with me got better. I regained my hope and I'm so glad that I didn't act on that one thing. So the final thing that I want you to think about is that when you see the big choice looming ahead of you, get clear about your micro choices. Choose to explore, choose to learn, choose to love, choose to serve, choose to have faith, choose to focus and invest in your purpose. And if you make those micro choices, what's gonna happen is that when you get to that place where you ultimately have to make that choice to go or to stay, to choose that job, to choose to do something with your children, with your health, with your parents, with your location, all the myriad of choices that a human being will face in their lifetime, you will feel ready. It will just be another day and you will feel the privilege of those choices that is a result of all those beautiful micro choices that you made every day leading up to it. If you like this coaching, make sure that you go to lizneed.com slash 100 days and check out the coaching program that I have for you. Go to Facebook, 180 Life Coaching Group, and I'll see you there. And please subscribe so that you can get more encouragement like this. I want to see you. I want you to make good choices for yourself. I don't want you to be afraid of the future. If you're feeling discouraged and a loss of hope, please know that there are people waiting for you to support you and that you have everything that you need inside of you to get through this. And if you're scared of something good in your future, I promise you that if you can envision it, you can rely and believe that you have everything inside of you to handle it. I know that you can handle your best life. So let's do this together. Let's take this journey. And when we get to those choices, we know that we can handle it.